so many of the kids I see are dying for a relationship, literally dying for a relationship. See me, see me, see me, shouting for a relationship, whether it's out in the streets or whatever, or rap music, hear my voice, uh, and there's a lot of pain out there. And Jack Calhoun would know. His life's work has been to save kids, save communities, and help them learn to save themselves. As the head of youth services in Massachusetts in the 70s, Calhoun called himself the chief delinquent for the state and rapidly graduated to chief kid for the country when he was appointed by President Carter to serve as the commissioner of the Administration for Children, Youth, and Families. From there, he went on to found and run the National Crime Prevention Council for 20 years. He failed at retirement and instead formed a 13-city gang prevention network in California, a program that got the attention of the current Justice Department, where Calhoun now consults and works to build neighborhoods and communities that don't produce crime. He also knows a thing or two about sandcastles. Summer at the beach. I get up early to get my emails behind me because soon Lauren will bounce down the stairs before me. And then I will become the toast thief, the monster who captures mermaids, the seeker for the squealing hider. This high-level Washington policymaker is also a poet. And when I get time, I uh, often on airplanes, I write poems. His latest book, Through the Hourglass, Poems of Life and Love, is a somewhat accidental collection of personal poems that capture the common experiences of life, courting, kids, grandchildren, teens, family. And that's where Calhoun's poetry and his policy intersect. You can't be a sentient human being and not look at a delinquent kid and see that kid as a prism back through family issues, housing issues, education. So it's really impossible to deal with delinquent kids and not start to be passionate about families. For Calhoun, the poetry fuels the policy because he knows what's at stake, the priceless moments of connection and appreciation, moments that for others are often sacrificed to violence in the young lives he's worked his entire life to save. I think for me, it's, um, it's seeing something, seeing a daily miracle, seeing something extraordinary and just not wanting to lose it.